Welcome back to the Closure Cones walkthrough. We're taking a look at number 12, creating functions. All right, so we're gonna learn a little bit more about how we create functions and the different things we can do here. So, looks like we've got a simple function defined for us at the top, a square function where it takes an x and it returns back x times x. So I think that's gonna be used later on. Let's start out here with the first one. One may know what they seek by knowing what they do not seek. Hmm, okay. So our answer is this vector with three items in it. And here's the expression, let. We're gonna let not a symbol be the complement of symbol. So this is something new we're gonna see. Complement, complement. Um, and with that, we're going to map this not a symbol function onto this vector of three elements. Okay, so what is complement? It looks like complement is probably returning a function that is the opposite of symbol. So where symbol might return true, the complement would return false. Okay, so the first one is a keyword A. Is that not a symbol? That is true. And the next one is B with a quote on it. It looks like that's a way to indicate that we want to refer to the symbol B. So I would say that not a symbol should return false because it is a symbol. And then the string C, that is also not a symbol. And there we go. So we got a taste of complement. That was a pretty easy way to say, I just want to return the opposite of whatever symbol would be returning. Um, next, praise and compliment may help you separate the wheat from the chaff. So our end result here is these uh, three elements in the vector. And how do we get that? Let's see, we need to let not nil be a, a function, I guess. We need to fill in the blank here. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna filter this vector based on this not nil function that we define. And look at that, it looks like it's got nil something, nil something, nil something, nil. So we need to filter out all of the nils and end up with just these three elements. So how do we say not nil? Well, we could write an anonymous function here, but I think the op what we can do is what we saw above. We can use the complement of an existing function. So I'll say complement of nil. Yeah, that's exactly what we're looking for. Cool, that can be handy. So, partial functions allow procrastination. That's cool. Okay, I think we're gonna see something interesting here. Okay, so we've got a let expression. Let multiply by five be the partial times five. Okay, let's look at that in a second. Um, and what do we do here? I guess we're gonna call the multiply by five. And what are we trying to multiply by five? Like the number four to get 20? Yeah, that worked. Okay, so let's see, how did this thing work? We got this partial and then the times five. So what's going on here is that we're able to return a partial function. So it's saying that I would like to multiply something by five. I would like to have times five and then some other stuff after that. I don't know what that stuff is yet, but I wanna have a function that basically already has, it's calling multiply and five and then something else. So that something else is up to you to be, to when you're, using, when you're calling that function later. So that was a quick way to def define a function. Okay, so what's next? Don't forget first things first. So we need to create this vector of four elements and it's saying let AB adder be the 
partial concat with this vector a and b okay so this is going to be creating a, a function that is the equivalent of calling concat with this as the first parameter the a and the b uh, vector and the rest is going to be a parameter to to this function so here we're directly calling a b adder and we need to pass in some values uh, two values c and d so and then the end result is these four elements well since it's called a b adder and we saw that it's calling concat and putting a and the b as the first elements we can put that in here first so there's two more elements left i guess we can make those whatever we want they're going to be coming from here so why don't we just make them c and d to carry on the pattern great so that one is passing so there's another example of partial application um, let's see functions can join forces as one composed function cool okay so function composition let's see we're going to create this function called inc and square increment and then square and how do they define that they don't define some anonymous function what they end up doing is calling comp to compose to create a new function out of something that already exists so here they're creating it out of the square function and the inc function increment so what's going to happen is when you're composing two functions together this last one here gets applied first and then the result of that is sent to the next function here square so let's see what would we have to pass here to get a 25 we would have to increment this number first and then square it to get 25 so if we unsquared it it should be 5 and if 5 was the result of incrementing 4 this all should work great okay so like I said, we start with a four, it increments it first and then squares it, and that's your result. So this was a pretty powerful way to express ink and square simply by saying it's a composition of the square function and the ink function. All right, have a go on the double decker. So double deck, it's a composition of the deck and the deck. So it's just applying deck twice. So what happens when we double deck 10? Well, I think we should get 10 minus 1 minus 1, which is 8. Great. Okay, so again, that was a pretty good example. Very succinct. Uh, be careful about the order in which you mix your functions. Indeed. So here we need to say square and then deck. Square and decrement. And we need to define that function here. And I think they would prefer if we would express this function in terms of comp, compose. So let's see, we see we're going to be squaring and decrementing 10, but actually let's just look at how we would implement square and deck and make very sure we get all this in the right order. So where, where should we put square if it needs to be executed first? That means it must be last right that's the one that's going to be executed first secondly is deck decrement so we'll put that one here so if we square and deck 10 we got 99 cool so maybe you can also look at it in terms of this if you were to uh, square and then deck 10 you would write it like that, right? And that worked, that got 99. So what happens is when we wanna make this general so that you can pass any value here, we wanna compose a function, square and deck, right? So just something to keep in mind as you're trying to make sense out of the ordering here. Okay, cool, so we saw some interesting ways to create some functions very succinct, succinctly using composition, partial, and complement. 
All right, great. Let's keep rocking then. I'll see you in the next video.